If you were one to read Liberal Party press releases and social media activity completely uncritically, you might be under the impression that over the last eight years, despite all of the policy failures of the Liberal government, that they must be doing something right on housing because they will not stop talking about it. Now, spoiler alert, like all other things, the entire Liberal Party's housing agenda is built on lies and a lot of taxpayer money, and there's really no success to be had in this area of government. But for some reason, the Liberals think that this is what they can maybe staple their chances at electoral success in 2025 to. I don't know why. For some reason, they keep promoting like housing minister Sean Frazier as like this fresh face for the Liberal Party, and maybe he'd be a great successor to Justin Trudeau as the next Liberal Party leader, despite his continuing incompetence. But they're pushing the, the housing issue as like their top thing so hard. It was like the main thing they mentioned in their year-end donation drive video. I'll, I'll even play it right here. It's quite remarkable. 2023 has been a year of delivering real progress for Canadians from building more homes faster to creating good middle-class jobs and making life more affordable with dental care and $10 a day childcare, we've accomplished a lot together. And now isn't the time to slow down. Chip in today to help us. So in that video, I don't want to get to the point where he starts asking for donations, but out of the three things he mentions, he mentions housing first because it is supposedly the thing that the liberals are just knocking, like they're just hitting the ball out of the park on. They're just doing so good. And like there, I keep hearing this number in other posts that they've made that we have 350,000 new homes on the way in Canada because of our new housing acceleration program. And as soon as you hear the term housing acceleration program, you should be already very skeptical that they're not actually building houses. One, the government shouldn't be in charge of building houses, but they're not even, you know, making it easier for people to build housing. They're just throwing more money at the already bloated and restrictive system uh, or the sort of like the uh, the industry, the, the housing development industry in various cities and locales just hoping that they will somehow accelerate the building of homes that were, I guess, already going to be built, but maybe they're going to speed up by a couple months. And maybe that's a good thing if it's actually getting more houses built. Is it getting more houses built? No. Uh, according to the, I believe it's like the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation. Yes, that's it. The uh, As of the la end of November, there was uh, 257,777 units that had been started, and that was up by 0 0.7 since October. Doesn't sound too bad. Uh, like Obviously, housing slows down by the end of the year, so a lot of housing is not being started in November. Probably not much started in December, especially that it's the holiday season. But you have to remember this in the context of the fact that we had a immigration increase in Canada of like 577,000 people in the year 2022 or 20, I always believe it's 2022 and it's probably been more in 2023. A lot of those are new immigrants and a lot of those are new students and 257,000 houses in a year are not going to cut it. But you might be saying, well, maybe they're making progress. Maybe they're building more houses than they had in previous years. Well, no. Uh, again, according to the Canadian Mortgage, Mortgage and Housing Corporation, in 2021, we built 200, uh, 271,000 houses. And in 2022, we built 261,000 houses. And if the housing supply between November and December of this year only rises by another 0.7%, I think it's going to be even less because it's the holiday season. We won't even hit last year's number, numbers. We've actually been going down in terms of houses being built. And no doubt it's because of rising inflation, taxation, and regulations in Canada. When you actually read a lot of the other little minutia points to the Liberals' housing agenda, there's actually a lot of it that would scare developers away from actually building more houses because there's all these like homeowners bill of rights and new zoning requirements and sort of different things you have to do to actually qualify for money that the money is going to end up just going to a lot of maybe potentially corporate friends of the liberals or the biggest, most bloated developers who are able to actually, you know, manipulate the system to get at that money. This isn't actually making housing get built faster. It's just throwing more money at a troubled system that isn't building houses fast enough for the crazy amount of immigration that the liberals have allowed for. Uh, so this is, this is one of those, sort of uh, initiatives that they're undertaking. This was from Housing Minister Sean Frazier. He said, we are partnered with the City of Toronto to help address the housing crisis. Our $471 million agreement will help fast track nearly 12,000 homes over the next three years and 53,000 homes more, uh, more homes over the next 10 years. 
That is absurd. Think of how much money that is to not build a single new home. There was not one home that is going to be built unless the liberals did what they did. They are merely fast-tracking 12,000 homes. And it's not like homes are taking seven years to build. It's not like this fast-tracking is actually going to get that many more homes online in a like a like in a more in a significantly faster like method they're just simply i guess speeding up the the construction of 12,000 homes uh with 471 million dollars i guess some of that money might go towards the next 53,000 homes but whenever it's a government program assume whatever number they told you is the low end estimate of how much this is going to cost to get only 12,000 homes built that were already going to be built based on the liberals own language around the issue. I want to go quickly uh, find this just to see how many homes were built in Canada over the last uh, little while. But I remember, or maybe I'm not going to bring it online. You you know, you generally get the picture. Finished homes in 2022, I believe, were only like 20, 222,000 homes. Obviously, whenever they start a home, it doesn't mean all of them are going to be built within that year. Obviously, homes started in November of this year are not going to be built until probably halfway through 2024. Uh, and that in the same years, we are having like nearly 600,000 immigrants coming to this country uh, people who are either going to be pursue being citizens or people who are just students. We're not building homes nearly fast enough, but like everything, the Liberals' entire housing agenda is built off of throwing taxpayer money at an issue without an actual plan in order to justify how their spending is going to create more houses. They're creating acceleration funds, which means nothing, but they are basically effectively bribing developers to just speed up their work or maybe giving money to some of the plan, I guess, is giving money to municipalities to buy up private land to build houses on to like, I guess, sell it off cheaply to developers to create more homes and then like, you know, sell them at a specific set price. But that's not actually creating any more homes than would have already been sold. You have effectively just taxed everyone in order to subsidize the building of homes. The amount of money going towards building these homes is actually probably more than it would have if you just let the market build the homes, but we're pretending the government's doing something. So they're throwing millions, if not literally billions in the scope of the entire country, not just Toronto, in order to pretend like they're treating a problem. This is going to lead to a rise in inflation. It already cost Canadians just $12 each to build, and this is obviously counting everyone, man, woman, child, all 40 million Canadians, cost us all $12 just to subsidize those 12,000 homes in the city of Toronto to no benefit to anybody. And in the grand scheme of things, Canadians are paying each hundreds of more dollars a year in order to subsidize this stupid program that the Liberals are not going to end up accomplishing anything with. And considering that this is their gambit for re-election, that we're trying to get more Canadians and homes. We need affordable homes for people. And their plan is basically just to tax you to death in order to build a cup, not even build more homes, speed up the building of a few homes and hope that that is going to stem the tide of uh, of like home, like of home ownership need when we are literally having more than double, if not triple, the amount of people coming into the country every year who need more homes and people who are trying to move out of their parents' homes who cannot afford anything. It's a complete failure and their entire housing agenda, like everything else, is a complete lie. Trudeau's a fraud, but they're just a assuming that if they throw enough money at things that you're going to be stupid enough to think they're doing a fantastic job. Anyways, that should be it for me today. If you want to donate to my legal fund, it is linked in the description of this video below. Uh, I'm being sued by a billionaire. I'm $25,000 deep in the dumbest defamation suit ever. We're winning, but they're just trying to bleed us of cash. So if you donate, that really helps us out. Also, I am running for the Calgary Signal Hill Conservative Party nomination. So if you live in Calgary Signal Hill, make sure you buy a Conservative Party membership. Anyone in your household 14 years old and older can buy a membership. So make sure everyone signs up. So we actually have a real conservative, hopefully in myself, representing the riding and we don't have some do nothing red Tory. But other than that, I hope everyone has a great day. And I am actually about to head out door knocking.